My name is Wangeshi Mwaneki. I'm born again by the grace of God. I am a child of this house, but now I, I serve at uh, Shiloh campus. In fact, it's been, I think, since Shiloh started, I have not been to a service here. But it's nice to be in shags. Tunaita uku ushago. Ushago. Eh, na tunapenda ushago. Si ushago kuna mambo mzuri. Eh, mtu akitoka ushago anabeba mandizi. So I know ndatoka na mandizi, you know. Pastor Kibera will make sure that nitoke na kamzigo kamiz. But I'm really, really glad to be here. Basi ninafuraia kuwa hapa. And this week, Wiki hii, since Wednesday, jumatano, we've had the Harvest Conference. Na kongamano la mavuno, ama ile harvest. I don't know how many of us have been able to attend any session there at Shiloh Campus. Hallelujah, good number of us. I hope you have been blessed. And so today we want to put a comma into this harvest conference and build something from what we've been learning the entire week. Our theme has been the restart. And I don't know how many of us are ready to restart. So my topic today Mada yangu leo is the art of restarting Ni the relationship. Ya kwanza tena uhusiano. The art of restarting the relationship. Ya kwanza tena uhusiano. I know there are many believers in this house. Najua kuna waumini wengi katika nyumba hii. And if you are like me, na kama wewe uko kama, wewe ni kama mimi, the day you got born again, siku uliokoka, the day you gave your life to Jesus, ulipopeana maisha yako kwa Yesu, life did not become all of a sudden new. Ya kwamba maisha hayakuwa basi yanaenda kwa sambamba tu. If anything, ha, kama hivyo, uh, uh, the devil now has a target on your back. Shetani sasa anakuwa na kuchunguza katika nyuma ya kama mgongo wako. And many believers wa umini wengi who have started the journey of salvation walioanza safari ya wokofu find themselves in a place of failing wanajipata wakianguka find themselves in a place of falling wanajipata wakiweza kurudi nyuma and so that believer hivyo basi muumini yule needs a restart anahitaji mwanzo mpya look at your neighbor ask them ukiangalia jirani yako muulize are you ready to restart je uko tayari na kuanza upya and so our theme verse for the conference was in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 1. And I want us to go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. We'll start a bit behind. And I'm going to read a couple of long scriptures. But we pray that God is going to reveal something to us. Amen. 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 So I'm going to read in English. I think when I'm done, you're going to do it in Swahili. Or we do it together. Sawa, sawa. Tunapangana hapa. So we're going to start from verse 12. And this is what the Bible says. And now Israel, what does the Lord require from you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. Behold to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heavens of the, and the earth and with all that is in it. Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your fathers and chose their offspring after them. You above all people, you are you above all peoples as you are this day. 
Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no longer stubborn. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Love the sojourner therefore, for you are sojourners in the land of Egypt." You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. And by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God who has done for you this great and terrifying things that your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt, 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars of heaven. I want all of us to read uh, chapter 11, verse 1 together, because this is the main text that was for the Harvest Conference. We're going into chapter 11, Aha. verse 1. Moja, kwa, moja, kwa na you shall therefore... Love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always. I want us to repeat that again. Therefore, Therefore you, you shall, shall love the Lord, Lord your God, God and keep, keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always. always. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your words. We thank you because it is the word of God that brings light into our lives. As we share today in your word, we pray that, Lord, you would bring light into our lives. Areas that need your light, reveal them to us. Build us with your word. For this we have prayed in Jesus' name. So the setting and the context of Deuteronomy is Moses and the children of Israel. And Moses is, is giving his last sermon. He's giving his last sermon to the children of Israel right before they get into the promised land. They've been walking around the wilderness for 40 years. And Moses disobeyed God at some point. And God told him, I will show you the land, but your feet shall not step on the land. And so the setting and the context of where we find ourselves, Moses is giving his last three sermons to Israel. He's giving three sermons and two poetic prophecies. And so they are just right near Canaan. And the entire of Deuteronomy is Moses speaking his last words before he dies. And if you read beyond Deuteronomy and going to the book of Joshua, the book of Joshua for lack of a better word ni kugawanisha mashamba. Sawa, sawa. In fact, if you read the book of Joshua, when you're tired, you'll sleep. <laughs> Joshua is the man who leads Israel right into the promised land. And he's dividing the land. What tribe will get what? Who will get where? And because of what? And that is important. 
Because it is a fulfilling of the promise that God gave right from Abraham. And so we find ourselves back in Deuteronomy. And just like we have read, Moses is telling the children of Israel, this is what you ought to do. You shall fear the Lord. You shall keep his commandments. You shall keep his statutes. You shall love him. You shall walk with him. And you shall give yourself fully in service to God. Why is it important that he's repeating himself? Remember the children of Israel in the wilderness. After they have been given the commandments by God. After the Lord has saved them from slavery. What do they do? They disobey. Over and over and over again they complain. Mara na mara wana over and over again they keep breaking the commandments of God. Mara na mara wana ya Mungu. And so if you want you can call this the restart of Israel. Moses is pleading with them. He's telling them, he's telling them, guys, we need to restart. We need to start again. We we were saved by God. We were given commandments by God. We kept breaking them. We need to restart. Because if we do not restart and go to the promised land and we keep disobeying God, the Lord will throw us into exile. And so my outline for this sermon because I am a teacher of the word and less a preacher, <laughs> is we are going to tackle three parts. The first part we are going to tackle is the requirement. If you're writing, we are tackling the requirement. The second thing we are going to tackle is the problem and diagnosis. The problem and diagnosis. And then finally, we're going to tackle the solution. For you to need a restart, it means there's somewhere you failed. There's somewhere you fell. And for us to tackle the requirement, what was expected of you in the first place? And who is requiring that thing out of you? Brothers and sisters, I want to submit to us today. The person giving the requirement is God. And why is God giving the requirement? The Bible says two things. In fact, Moses addresses it uh, from chapter 10 verse 12 all the way to 22. Moses is telling the children of Israel. Remember what God did for you when he saved you out of Egypt. Remember who God is. So God is giving the requirement. And the reason he's giving the requirement is two things. One, because he's God. And we are his. He is the creator, we are the created. Number two, because of what he has done. Pastor David Guzik likes to say, because of who God is and what he has done, he has the right to, to tell us what to do 
And we have the obligation to obey him. Brothers and sisters, you are not God. Even of your own life. The Bible says inasema, later on in the New Testament katika, uh, uh, jipia, that you were bought at a price. Kwa if we were to compare the Israelites and us, wa na sisi, many of you would think there was no Egypt for you to be saved from. Wenu mgedha, mgedha misri ya wewe wa but that is not true. Si because your Egypt was sin. Your Egypt was the enslavement of sin. The Bible says in the New Testament, Paul is speaking and he's saying that you were a slave to sin. And you might think like the Israelites had the wilderness. You do not have one. But the truth of the matter is the wilderness for you is this world because we are not of this world and so the world is your wilderness where the Lord allows you to walk so that he can sanctify you otherwise you would have gotten born again and been raptured to heaven. But God does not allow that. After you get born again, he allows you to be here in your wilderness so that he can make you more like himself and less like yourself. And just like the children of Israel had a promised land, you too have a promised land. And your promised land is heaven, the eternal life that we are all sharing in. And because the Lord saved you out of sin. And because the Lord is creator, mighty, awesome and wonder. He requires something out of you. We're going to read again. Deuteronomy 10.12. I'm going to ask the media team to put it in the English standard version if possible. ESV. ESV. If it is not, it is fine. We can do it in the NKJV. So all of us, we're going to look at uh, what is being projected. We're going to read together. Sawa, sawa. And now, Israel, what does the Lord, your God, require of you? Pause a minute. I want you to see the word require. And I want you to see who is requiring. We're going to start again. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Verse 13. And to keep the commandments of the Lord and his teachers, which I command you today for your good. Very good. There are four things. Number one, the requirement is this. Fear the Lord your God. Number two, walk in his ways. Not some of his ways. Not the ones that are, con are convenient to you. Not the ones that you like. The Bible says walk in all his ways. Number three, love him. Love him. Love him. Number four, serve the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul. We had an amazing preacher on Thursday at Shiloh, Reverend Masharia, who opened our eyes to see that our service is unto God. 
ibada yetu ni kwake Mungu and for the men that are here na wanaume walioko hapa the authority that is here aha aha a, wale ambao ama a, a, mamlaka iliyo hapa we are just assisting them sisi tuwasaidie but our service is unto the lord lakini ibada ni kwa bwana if you are serving in church aha kama unahudumu kanisani so that any of these leaders see you ili kwamba viongozi hao pengine wakuone you have missed the point umekosa nafasi our service is unto the lord ibada yetu ni kwake mungu our service is unto the lord ibada ni kwa mungu if you have done it kama umefanya with an attitude ukiwa na ile mtazamo fulani and these people do not see how i wake up at 5 on sunday morning hawa watu waoni ninavyoamka asubuhi saa 11 moja i dare say Seme. go home and reevaluate Emba, enda nyumbani na ukajiangalie because our service is unto kwa sababu ibada yetu ni kwa nani if you have been living in fear kama umekuwa ukiishi kwa uoga of, of a person ayakuogopa mtu of human beings ya binadamu of what they think wanadhania nini of how they'll carry you wanakubebaje you need to go and restart unahitaji kwenda kuanza you need to go and restart unahitaji kwenda kuanza because our requirement is to fear the lord kwa sababu tu And I submit to you today. If you fear the Lord, you will fear sin. If you fear the Lord, you will fear unrighteousness. If you fear the Lord, you will fear company that takes you away from him. Our requirement itaji letu is to walk in God's ways. Nikutembea katika njia za Bwana. All ways. Siku zote always aha njia zote always njia zote not some ways hiyo njia kadhaa not some ways that uh, benefit me ama zile zinazonifurahisha and can i bring it to you today nikuleteni leo obedience to god is inconveniencing aha kumtii mungu wakati mwingine kunaumiza kidogo kunaumiza ama it's inconveniencing kunasababisha kukosa ile when you go to uh, immigration offices in Nairobi ukienda pale ofisi za immigration ama za kusafiri you're trying to get a passport unataka ile passport and they tell you madam unajua printer zimevunjika mhm printer hazifanyi kwa hivyo ndio to restart printer ni printer ianzishwe tena utatoa kitu unahitaji kufanya kitu and you kitu. need to travel very soon na unataka kusafiri to tell them no is inconveniencing utawaambia kuambia hapana basi inakuumiza inakukosea young man in the house tuko nyumba hapa young lady in the house uh, binti katika nyumba hii to tell me in this economy that we have to wait to do a wedding in church with a pastor and our parents is inconveniencing ungojea kufanya in fact in this economy katika uchumi huu the convenience thing thing the convenient thing jambo la haraka ama la kufanya lenye ni ku agree aha tunakubaliana wewe unalipa rent na mimi nalipa rent tukiishi pamoja tutalipa rent moja unaona you see unaona it's very convenient si hiyo inakaa tu sawa inakaa yani hakuna kuumizwa yes ndio It is inconveniencing to wait for sex in marriage young people. It is inconveniencing on your body. It is inconveniencing on your pocket. But it is a requirement of God. It is inconveniencing to not bribe. Aha, kukosa kuweza kutoa hongo inakaa ni kama inafikiria. When you're driving on the road. Tembea katika barabara and a cop tells you simama simama. Askari anakuambia hebu simama kidogo. Let a driving license. Hele, hebu leta cheti yako ya kusafiri. And then as anashikilia driving license. Ameshikilia driving license? Ulikuwa unaenda speed gani? Right? Anakuambia sasa unajua nikikupeleka station to process kazi ni mingi kitu ya haraka haraka wewe nunua so soda it is inconveniencing to tell him i am a believer to end station aha basi ni ngumu kumwambia mimi ni muumini wacha twende kwa station but brothers and sisters lakini ndugu na wadada it is part of all the ways of god basi ni miongoni mwa vitu vyote vya mungu and so the lord requires kwa hivyo mungu anahitaji that we fear him ya kwamba tumheshimu that we live in reverence of him ya kwamba tukae tukimheshimu yeye that we walk in all his ways 
that we love him that we serve him with all our hearts and with all our souls and I want us to ask I want to ask a question and we are going to answer all of us together is it easy? I want you to answer together with a big yes or no. You decide which one it is. Is it easy? Louder. Is it easy? It is not. It is difficult. So what is the problem? And what is the diagnosis? So I'm going to go to my second point. The problem and the diagnosis is the sinful nature of man. It is the sinful nature of man. And this is what Moses told the children of Israel. Deuteronomy 10 16. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart so that you are no longer stubborn. The sinful nature hardens our heart. And so we become stubborn. We become stubborn to God's ways. We become stubborn to the way that God wants us to walk and live in. And a couple of problems arise. We're going to talk about three of them. Actually, four. Number one, the stubbornness of our hearts, it causes us to distrust God. We no longer trust God. That when he says he is good, we know he is good. Think about the children of Israel in the wilderness. They have been walking for quite a long time. And then all of a sudden the Lord calls Moses up the mountain so that he can speak to him and give him the law. What do they do when they are impatient and the stubbornness begins to arise? They make for themselves a golden calf to worship. Because they do not trust that the one who began the journey with us from Egypt is able to take take us where he said he will take us. Sometimes believers, we don't trust that the one who saved you is able to sustain you. The one who promised you eternal life is able to walk with you in the wilderness. And so we put our trust in money. We put our trust in influence and power in a rogue way. Because we do not trust the one who started it. Or the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that the one who began a good work in you, he is able to bring it to completion. But because of the stubbornness produced by our heart Heart. we don't trust that number two we become stubborn against God's law we low-key despise his authority and it shows in the way believers we compromise it shows in our compromise. It shows in the way we walk. It shows in the way we talk. It shows in the way we live. Pastor Alice reminded us um, on Friday the way you live as a believer. Are there other people who say I want to be like this 
people think kama hii ndio wokovu ni kama mimi sitaki if this is salvation then i don't want it it shows in the way you compromise inaonyesha vile wewe unaweza the way you tell people you're born again but you entertain when they talk badly about god una unaambia watu umeokoka lakini wakiongea vibaya kwa mungu wewe unakuwa tu pale it shows in the compromise basi inaonyesha jinsi unajiachilia another thing that is produced by the sinful nature and the hardening of heart another problem shida ingine ya pili is that we fear people instead of god yani tunaogopa watu badala ya kumuogopa mungu i want you to look at your neighbor angalia jirani yako and i want you to ask them muulize look at them deeply muangalie tuko macho in the circular thing in their eye angalia ile uh, uh, kitu ya round kwa macho yake kitu ya round kwa macho <laughs> Who do you fear? Unaogopa nani? Who do you fear? Unaogopa nani? Do you fear God? Unaogopa Mungu? Or do you fear people? Ama watu? Do you fear the discipline of God? Unaogopa tabia za Mungu? Or the discipline of people? Ama tabia za binadamu? Brothers and sisters. Ndugu na wadada. In the generation we are living in. Katika kizazi tuishi. And the times that we are going into. Na mahali ambapo tunaelekea. Believers we are being called to stand on our faith. Waumini tunahitajika kusimama kwa imani yetu. And it may mean many things. It may mean there are spaces we will not walk to because we keep telling those people we do not believe in LGBTQIA+++++. Inamaanisha kwamba sisi hatuamini ile mambo plus yote LGBTQ. Umesikia tayari ameona imemshinda. Ni ma plus na ma plus na ma plus. Yaani kuongeza kuongeza hadi kuongeza. It will mean there are spaces we have to go into. Inamaanisha kuna mahali tutaenda. And stand our ground. Na tutasimama imani. Because our fear is of God and not of people. Kwa sababu uoga wetu tunamwogopa. Because we fear the discipline of God and not of people. Tunaogopa Mungu sio binadamu. We are reminded of the church in the New Testament that was constantly persecuted because of their beliefs. Tukikumbushwa katika kanisa la mwanzo watu ambao waliweza kuumizwa kwa sababu ya imani yao. Because they feared God. Walimwogopa Mungu. And not people. Na si watu. I want you to look at your neighbor. Kimwangalia jirani yako tena. Ask them who do you fear? Muulize waogopa nani? Who do you fear? Unaogopa nani? Because it will show. Ni sababu itaonyesha. It will show. Itaonyesha. There is a season that is coming that being a Christian will be a crime. Wakati unakuja pengine kuwa mkristo itakuwa shida. It's already happening in some parts in the Middle East and in Asia. Kuna mahali kwingine ambayo inafanyika tayari. I want you to look at another neighbor who looks like they fear God. Hebu angalia jirani mwingine ambaye anakaa pengine huyu anaogopa Mungu. Tell them stand on your faith. Mwambie simama kwa imani yako. Stand in your belief. Simama kwa tu imani. Stand on your faith. Imani yako simamia. Stand on your belief. Simamia kile unachoamini. We're going to very quickly Ah uh, kwa muda wa haraka tu because the time is running sababu muda wa kimbia we going to get into the solution tuangazie suluhisho we going to get into the solution suluhisho Wangazie. we have discovered that god has a requirement for every human being basi tumetambua mungu anahitaji ya kila bin adam and we have discovered that the requirement on the believer is even heavier na tunatambua kwamba hata mahitaji ile kwa muumini basi ni nzito nzito and we've, as, we've also seen the problems and diagnoses na, na pia tumeangalia shida na uvumbuzi wake that are in our hearts ya, ambayo iko ndani ya mioyo yetu so that we are not able to fully follow the requirement of god ambayo inatusababisha tunakataa kufuatilia mahitaji ya mungu and now want to look at the solution sasa tuangazie suluhisho look at a neighbor Aliye jirani tena tell them we need to restart. Mwambie tunahitaji kuanza upya. Tell them we need to restart. Tunahitaji kuanza upya. We need to restart. Tunahitaji mwanzo mpya. The question I'm sure you're asking. Nauliza swali. How do we restart? Sasa tutaanza vipi? And you can write it as a question in your book if Ebu, you write it. Andika swali ikiwa kama swali kitabuni mwako. How do we restart? Je, tutaanza vipi? We're going to go into 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Twende kwa wa Korintho wa 2 mlango ni wa 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 wa verse 10 and 11. Pili mlango ni wa 7 tuanzie pale 10 hadi 11. We're going to read it together. Tusome kwa pamoja. For godly okay. sorrow produces, produces repentance, repentance leading, leading to salvation. salvation. Not, not to be, be regretted, regretted 
but the sorrow of the world produces death. Verse 11. For observe this very thing, that you sorrowed in a godly manner. What diligence it produced in you, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. In all things you proved yourselves to be clear in this matter. I want you to remember, brothers and sisters, that godly sorrow Ya kwamba kilio cha mungu, cha kiungu Leads to repentance Ina ongoza kwa toba How you will restart Bile utaanza After you have not After you have not uh, Kept the requirement of God Kama hauja weka uh, mahitaji ya mungu Is that you need to have godly sorrow Ni kwamba unaitaji kuwa na kile kilio cha mungu That will lead you to repentance Ambayo itakusababisha ukaweze kuto, kwa, tu, kwa toba That godly sorrow Ukiwa na alihile Is not crying in church Sio kunilia kanisani I want to attack us a bit uh -huh. That godly sorrow uh -huh. is not woye woyeing yourself. Sio, sio woye woyama, that godly sorrow. Uh -huh. uh, 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 sorrow ile, hofu ile, sorry, samahani, hofu, asanti, ni ngumu. Yeah. That's why we need interpretation. <laughs> Kwa sababu wengine tungembo tuubiri na kiswaili, inge stress. Thank you so much. Asante. Can you clap for him? He's doing a good, good job. Asante. That godly sorrow is not looking at yourself and saying, oh yeah, I have wronged God. It is also not a bad attitude that we were reminded by Reverend George on a Thursday that after you have done something wrong, you tell God you do what you see best. Godly sorrow is reflecting on your Yourself, at the closet, you know the closet, in your house after you've locked all the doors, examining yourself and saying, Lord give me your spirit, I want to repent, give me your spirit, I want to turn around, because repent Repentance is a 180 degree turn. I was walking this way. I turn 180 degrees. I start walking this way. Because godly sorrow follows with repentance. And the Lord requires it of us. Have you been here? Are you here? Uko hapa. You're a believer. Mumini. But you have turned away. Umekeuka. The Lord is saying, Mungu Godly sorrow ya Mungu. leads to repentance. Toba. Are you here? Uko hapa. You're not even born again. Hata the Lord still requires something out of you. Mungu kitu He's kwa asking kwa. you, restart your life. Anasema, restart tena. with Jesus. Na yes. Restart with me. Anza na mimi. Take a 180 degree turn Start following the Lord Hallelujah. Hallelujah And after we have restarted How do we remain in God? So the second part Of the solution Is how do we remain? Because if we get so many people who are getting born again and that is beautiful but we are also not maintaining them what are we doing let me tell you brothers and sisters it is important for you to share the gospel so that people know Jesus but it is also important that you walk with them so that they remain and so if you are here you're born again Okoka. and you have deviated this is for you you're here, you're born again you think you have not deviated Okoka, lakini unadhania, this is especially for you Isasa, wewe ndio and you're here, you're not even born again Na uko hapa, hata my goodness, this is for you ni yako. number one, how we remain after the restart is we seek transformation 
kubadilishwa by renewing our minds kwa ku, aha, kweza kuanzi, kubadilisha mawazo yetu through the reading of God's word kwa kusoma andiko la neno la Mungu a believer who does not read God's word is a powerless believer Mumini asiyesoma neno la Mungu basi hana nguvu the believer who waits for Sunday to be taught the word of God is powerless anaengojea kila Jumapili asome andiko basi hana at, nguvu at best you will win the battles until Monday Nio, utaweza kushinda vita hadi Jumatatu and then the enemy will thrash you until Saturday alafu adui atakufinyilia hadi juma jumamosi juma and then you'll come and get power alafu utakuja tena upate nguvu that will at best ambayo kwa kwa, kwa uzuri wake will sustain you until Monday afternoon itakuweka hadi Jumatatu saa 8 ama adhuri so the person who comes to ask you for a bribe on Tuesday jumaine mtu atakayekuuliza hongo has found you powerless and so you will start being thrashed by the enemy until Saturday we need to awaken as the church of Jesus Christ and read our bibles for ourselves so that we can get power and so that we cannot be lied to because those people those false teachers and false prophets are spoiling it for the church if you're here and you're a believer after shakahola and you tell people in your office you're a believer i'm sure when you went to the office they told you ona ona see If you went through evangelism we had evangelism a couple of weeks ago If you went to take part in evangelism Kama ulienda kuhusika After Shakohola the truth of the matter is it is even more difficult to evangelize Baada ya Shakohola hata ikakuwa ngumu sana wewe kuweza kufanya Because they are telling you you are telling me oh angasijui god god you people are the ones telling people to kill themselves Unaambia nianiambia kuhusu wao Mungu Mungu lakini nyinyi mwatuambia tujiue So we need to read the bible for ourselves so that we don't follow every wave of doctrine hivyo basi inatupasa kujisomea maandiko ili tusifuate tu mafunzo yoyote when somebody comes and tells you give a car give land give a house for you to see heaven anapokuja mtu kukwambia tupatie gari shamba ama ama chochote ili and you accept na unakubali you don't read your bible usome andiko so you don't know what god wants from you hujui ataka nini mungu kutoka kwako because god does not require your car and house and money gari, nyumba, we need to stop making jesus look like he's a guy on crutches waiting for our help he's king he's king he's lord he owns cattle on a thousand hills so you giving to the church is not you doing god a favor it is a privilege it is a privilege to give to god it is a privilege to serve god it is a privilege to come here and worship him and you would take it as a privilege if you read your what Oh you need to love your bible You need to love your bible You need to read the word After that you need to study it After that you need to meditate on it After that you need to talk the word kuongea maandiko and then you can live it na ukaweze kuishi but many of us do not even read hata tusomi and if we read we read it very quickly two verses for for it to sustain me for today and then i'm good ama kwa haraka tu na papasa oh let us awaken and study our bible tusome maandiko let us meditate on the word of god tuweze kufikiria let us talk the word of god so that we can live the word of god who here wants to be a powerful believer who here wants to be a powerful believer oh you must read the word of god you must study the word of god you must meditate on the word of god we cannot be christians who want to have power but we eat we wait on sunday for it to be broken down to us I want you to hold your head like this 
hold your head like this. Tell Jesus, Jesus, give me strength. Oh Lord, give me strength. I want to be powerful. Give me the strength to study my word. Give me the strength to read the word. Give me strength to meditate upon it. Give me strength, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Number two. Part of the solution. We, we need to be intentional with our environment. We need to be intentional with our environment. I want to ask you a question. Who are your friends? Who do you hang out the, with the most? The Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 1 Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked Nor stand in the way of sinners Nor sit at the seat of scoffers I am not doing this demonstration to make you smile I want you to see something Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the way of sinners or sit at the seat of scoffers. It is a slow fade. Uh -huh. You walk then you stand then you are tired so you sit who are the people that you walk with what places do you find yourself standing who do you sit with who do you ask for counsel who is your close circle 1 Corinthians 15.33 bad company corrupts good morals you cannot tell us that your closest friends are what is described in Revelation. This story is, is Mama Christine's, Mama Mwashigadi's story. This is how she raised her children. And her children keep telling us that out there, they are drunkards. People who do evil. All kinds of evil doers. You cannot tell us this is your crew. And then you, you are good. You cannot tell us that you walk with drunkards, but you are the one who drinks Fanta. If there are four drunkards that you walk with, very soon you will be the fifth one. The same way if there are four godly people that you walk with, very soon you'll be the fifth one. Who is your company? Who do you walk with? Who gives you advice? Who talks to you? Who do you allow in your circle? Guard your circle. Let it be a privilege for people to be your friends. Because you have the Holy Spirit. Let it be a privilege for people to hang out with you. Pastor Alice reminded us it is a shame to keep saying we are just killing time. Killing time and you have the Holy Spirit in you. Be, be mean with your space. Don't just allow anything and anybody in your environment. Where do you go? Where do you hang out? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you hang out in clubs and think those, that thing will not affect you, it will affect you. If you hang out with gossipers, you will be a gossiper. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three. The last solution is to seek God's presence in prayer. It is to seek God's presence in prayer. It is to seek God's presence in prayer. Do you pray? Do you intercede? 
and not praying the two minutes prayer in the morning. Do you take time for intercession? Because if we don't seek the presence of God, we will restart and then next Sunday we need to restart again. And then next month we need to restart again. But we want to restart and remain. So we need to seek the presence of God. And you to take a minute Think about your life. Think about your life as a believer. And you are the one you are saying I need a restart. Stand up on your feet. You are here you are also saying I want to get born again. Run to the front. The Bible says that on the last days when we meet Jesus the question will be did you stand up for me? There is no shame in giving our lives to God. You are here, you are saying I need a restart. Stand up on your feet. We are not fearing man, we are not fearing anybody, we are not looking to anyone, we are just saying I need a restart. Stand up on your feet. You are here, you are saying I want to to give my life to Jesus, run to the front. If you're restarting, you're standing up. And if you're giving your life to Jesus, you're coming to the front. Hallelujah. I will give you one more minute to consider. Because this thing is serious. We are living as powerless believers. Because after we gave our lives to Jesus, sin came away and has taken us away from God. I want to give you one more minute. Somebody who is wrestling and asking themselves, what will they think of me? Oh, the fear of man. If you are saying I need to restart, stand up on your feet. You're saying you need to restart. Stand up on your feet. We'll Kama give you a minute. Upia, si we'll mama. give you a second. I know I'm ambushing this man. But my boss is around. And he's a believer and somebody that I look to. So he will come and pray for these people. Tafadhali. Amen. And you'll clap for my boss. He's a man I love and honor and he's a man who loves the Lord. He's going to pray for the people who are restarting. As he's coming to pray, you're still waiting. You're still waiting. We are waiting for you. Every eye is closed. Every head is bowed. You're here, you need to restart. Stand up on your feet. You're here, you need to restart. Stand up on your feet. You're saying, Lord, I need to restart. Lord, I am tired of living like a powerless believer. Lord, I want to restart. Stand up on your feet. We're giving you five more seconds. Because if you gain the entire world, and then you lose your soul, what will it be of benefit? So we are giving you 10 more seconds. You're here, you're saying, Lord, I want to restart. You're tired of living a powerless life. You're saying, Jesus, I want to restart. Lord, I want to restart. Stand up on your feet. Because the Lord Jesus died for you. So that you can live a powerful life. So that the enemy, you would have power over him. You're saying I am tired of the lies of the enemy. I want a restart. We are waiting for you. We are waiting for you. Do not live here without Jesus. Do not live here without the power of the Holy Ghost. Do not live here as a powerless believer. Do not live here without giving your life to Jesus. Do not live here without giving your life to Jesus. Because if you gain the entire world, you gain all the wealth and all the riches and all the money. You get all the influence and power. But then you lose 
your soul. What will it be of gain? You will not go to hell with your money. You will not go to hell with your riches. You will not go to hell with your influence. It will have been for nothing. Five more seconds. You're saying you want to restart. Stand up on your feet. You're saying you want to get born again. The altar is open. The Lord does not condemn you. He loves you. That's why he sent himself in the person of Jesus Christ to die for your sin, to die for you, so that you may receive salvation. Jesus name in Jesus name thank you father and thank you for everyone who has stood up the only reason the enemy has got you where you are is because he's trying to stop what God wants to do in you you are God's masterpiece I know there's some people still seated but you need to recommit God has called you God has given you an instruction you began but something happened but you need to choose to restart to recommit because on the other side of that restarting is something God wants to do is someone's life will be transformed it's a nation that will be transformed it's a family that will be transformed so this is nothing to do with you only it's who God is calling you to it's the assignment upon your life I want us to contend because on the other side of this yes is history being changed things in your family that have never happened in your ministry where it stagnated or whatever else it could be the enemy is fighting that thank you for those who are still standing and I still believe as we're talking of restarting as my sister said there is someone who needs to start and that means committing your life to Jesus Christ it's the beginning of everything so if you are here or if you are already standing and you are one of those saying I want to get saved I want to give my life to Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit has convicted you of your sin and truly you have have seen and grieved and said I am wrong and I want to live right and follow Jesus I want you to lift up your hand if you are standing you can lift up your hand that person who is saying I want to get saved thank you Jesus thank you just keep lifting up your hand don't be shy just keep your hand up thank you, thank you. anyone else you are saying yes I want to say yes to Jesus I want to start this walk with Jesus Christ. He died for you. I can see there are people outside. If you're in the tent, Jesus loves you too. And he wants to start this journey with you. Anyone else? Five more seconds. And anyone else who's still standing for saying, I want to restart. I want you to do business with God. For those who are seated, don't take it for granted. Commit yourself to God. Say, God, I pray that I will not fall out from this that you have called me in this race. In the name of Jesus, refresh me. Fill me afresh. Stay committed to this that you have called me. 
in Jesus name anyone else who wants to say yes to Jesus thank you for those who are still standing I know right now there are some of you who may be seated and there is something the enemy is whispering to you maybe it's an addiction maybe you've tried one too many times maybe you're angry at God why should I restart why should I recommit to God yet God you failed me God is saying to you this morning afternoon this morning try me one more time the church may have hurt you a Christian may have failed you but God is inviting you to partner with him one more time maybe offense happened and you have anger and as a result you decided to give up if that is you please stand God is calling you he wants to use you one more time to do great things for his glory in Jesus name and so if your hand is up and with the church alongside let's say this prayer with them dear Lord Jesus Dear Lord Jesus. Come on, let's say it with them just to encourage them. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I come to you this day. I come to you this day. Acknowledging. Acknowledging that I'm a sinner. That I'm a sinner. And I have fallen short of your glory. And I have fallen short of your glory. And now. And now. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness. I confess all my sins. I confess all my sins. And ask. And ask that you'd wash me that you'd wash with your blood with your blood that you shed on the cross that you shed on the cross i do believe i believe that jesus that jesus is the son of god is the son of god he came down to earth he came down to earth died on the cross died on the cross and rose again and rose again just for me just for me so now jesus so now jesus i invite you i invite to you to be the lord to be the lord and savior and savior of my life of my life write my name write my name in the book of life in the book of life jesus jesus i cannot do this by myself I cannot do this by myself. So fill me. So fill me with your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. And help me. And help me in this walk of salvation. In this walk of salvation. I pray all this. I pray all this. Trusting. Trusting. And believing. And believing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For the rest of us who are standing, just lift up your hand. Those who are saying, I am restarting. I don't know what may have made you to not to stop doing what you are called to do or to waver or to just stagnate but as you lift up your hand in surrender I want you to present it to God if it's success that got you caught up or failure or relationships or sin or maybe you became too busy with the call, with the call, maybe you're, you've served me in serving God and you've not been able to be in that place of intimacy oh. with God. I don't know what may have come in between. But you're saying today, I need a restart. Present whatever it is right now to the Lord. Repent of it in Jesus' name. Whatever may have taken the place of God, whatever may have made you to lose trust in God, whatever may have caused fear instead of faith, repent and say, God, here it is. Help me. In the name of Jesus, our God and Father, we thank you because you're a God of second chances. We have stood up as your children saying we need a restart in different areas of our lives. And God, we stand asking for forgiveness. Whatever we may have done that may have caused us to be in this position, we joyfully repent to God and we turn back to you a complete turnaround in the name of Jesus Christ and Father God we ask that you'd fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit that God would have deeper conviction 
mahusiano ya karibu God where we may have cared for the opinion of men Mali tulipoangalia mtazamo wa binadamu God from this day forth Tangia siku hii we live for an audience of one Tunataka kuishi tukiwa mmoja We are you only O oh God Tukusikize wewe peke yako And God we seek to please you only O oh God Natuka kufurahisha wewe peke yako In the name of Jesus Katika jina la Yesu God I pray for discipline Ninaomba kwamba tuwe na nidhamu A consistency in a place of prayer and word Tukiwa na uendelevu wa kuomba na kusoma neno In the name of Jesus Christ Katika jina la Yesu I pray that you may make us sensitive O oh God Ukaweza kutufanya tukaweza kuwa to the leading of your holy spirit tunaangalia roho mtakatifu anachotongoza katika jina la yesu god any associations whatsoever mahusiano yoyote bwana today we renounce them in the name of jesus christ tunayakata kwa jina la yesu i pray you may give us boldness and courage oh god ukatupatia nguvu to, to walk out of some of these friendships and relationships tukaweza kutembea kutoka katika uhusiano sisi those among us who need to quit their jobs to follow the call wale ambao wanahitaji kuacha kazi God I pray that you may give us faith to step out in obedience ukatupatie imani ya kuweza kutembea katika ukukuti in Jesus name katika jina la Yesu Father Lord I pray baba Mungu naomba for each and every one of us in this congregation kwa kila mmoja aliyoko mali hapa immediate obedience will be our portion ya kwamba kuti kutakuwa nafasi yetu in the name of Jesus Christ na Yesu haleluya god we pray bwana tunaomba for those who may have given up wale ambao wamechoka one reason or another who god kwa sababu moja ama nyingine i pray that you'd fill us with hope oh god ninaomba ukatujaze na tumaini with faith oh god na imani to do that that you've called us to do kutenda vile umetuita tufanye in the name of jesus Christ. katika jina la Yesu god we pray tunaomba bwana as we restart tunapoanza upya whatever upi. spiritual blessing and capacity needed oh god baraka yote ambayo inahitajika bwana may you grant it to us in the name of jesus utupatie katika jina la yesu may your presence be with us uwepo wako uwe nasi may your hand be upon us oh god kono wako uwe nasi in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu we thank you for what you've done tunashukuru kwa ile umetenda and you're going to continue to do na unaendelea kutenda and as we continue oh god i pray na tunapoendelea bwana ninaomba because i know with this restart will come great kwa sababu katika mwanzo huu atakuwa na mambo makubwa that you do in us and through us ya kwamba unatenda kwetu na kwa sisi ya kwamba bwana tutatembea katika knowing it is you tukichwa ni wewe working in us ukifanya kazi ndani yetu na kupitia kwetu sisi kwa jina la Yesu and that we will not in any way na hatutafanya katika njia yoyote they are to share in your glory akukosa kushiriki katika utukufu wako in Jesus name katika jina la Yesu cover us with your blood oh god just to funike na damu yako no form of backlash whatsoever hakuna kugongana kote our destiny will not be aborted oh god ya kwamba uembele wetu hautaweza kuweza kutoka as we oh god our destiny will not be exchanged in Jesus name tunapoanza usoni wetu hautabadilishwa God you shall bring it to fruition that that you have deposited in us. Utakamilisha kile ambacho umeweka ndani yetu. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. I pray for speed. Ninaomba ya kwa mwendo. I pray for restoration. Ninaomba kwa urejesho. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. We give you glory and we give you honor. Tunakupasi bwana. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. Amen and amen. 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 Amen.